Hello people, in this video let us look at what a screening test is. How do you define it? Basically the definition, if they ask you what will you say it is. Screening test is a, basically it's an active search. Okay, what is it? It's an active search for detecting the hidden disease. So you want to detect what? The hidden disease. Among whom? The apparently healthy individuals in the community by means of rapidly applied test for what are you doing all this why are you trying to do a uh, catch these people who have hidden disease for gaining lead time in the treatment of disease secondary prevention and also for control of spread you can see right in this case where they are checking the uh, whether the person has uh, uh, covid so that they can prevent the spread so guys, what is screening test? Can you see it? Screening test is an active search. Okay, bad color here. It's the active search. You're actively searching for what? Hidden disease in apparently healthy individuals by use of rapid tests. Rapid what test did they say? Rapid, rapidly applied test could be examinations, etc. Uh, for what? For gaining lead time. This is important guys. For gaining lead time in the treatment. So you will gain some lead time in the treatment of the disease. You can do secondary prevention that is early diagnosis and treatment. That's what they're talking about. And you can also control the spread. Control the spread of diseases to others. Right? So all this it will help. So see major portion of diseases will usually be below this uh, waterline. Right? This so you have here, you know the iceberg phenomena, this is clinical, what you actually see is the clinical. So the, you can see or these people are diagnosed, but major portion of the uh, diseases is below the waterline, that is you cannot see. So major number of uh, tuberculosis will be here. A few tuberculosis cases you will see, but most of them will be undiagnosed, latent, inapparent, they will be carriers. Uh, pre-symptomatic right so those you can catch how by screening and whose concern is all this this is the concern of an epidemiologist right so screening wants to catch these people who are having hidden disease that is the by the iceberg phenomena you understand what hidden disease is what are the types of screening so the next question they will ask you is what is screening define it and types of screening they'll ask you now you have to tell the types of screening types of screening you have mask screening you will get a lot of people and you will check all of them or high risk screening. You will find people who are high risk. Only them you will screen. That is called a selective screening. Then you have multi-phasic screening. Let's see what this is. Mainly these three are what are given in your textbook. Other things that you can write, multi-purpose screening, opportunistic screening, like somebody walks in for something in your hospital, you anyways test them for COVID, right? Opportunistic screening, newborn screening, pregnancy screening. So let us look at what mass screening is. Mass screening means you will be looking at this one guys, mass screening. What is mass screening? You will screen whole population or a subgroup, right? Um, irrespective of um, uh, risk factors, etc. Basically, this is very enthusiastic. You are doing uh, like screening everybody. <clears throat> Earlier, they used to, people used to uh, uh, accept this, but now I think they don't accept all this nowadays. Okay, so this is just, you'll screen the whole population. Um, this is, uh, what we, what are we saying? It's not useful that much. People also don't accept it that much. Okay. Uh, high risk screening. Let's go to high risk screening, guys. Now we are going to what? High risk screening. So basically selective to high risk groups. Who will be high risk groups based on age, you can say, right? Um, or uh, based on the social, uh, socioeconomic status, you can consider some things. So based on the risk factors, if people smoke or uh, have smoking history or have uh, consume uh, smoking, let's say, you can check them for lung cancer. You can uh, check an alcoholic for liver uh, cirrhosis, etc. So those are high risk screening. So whoever has uh, high uh, elevated serum cholesterol, you can check them for coronary heart disease, right? So why will you check everybody for coronary heart disease? Just do a cholesterol check. If they have high cholesterol, then check them for coronary heart disease, okay? What's the th third type, guys? Multiphasic screening. Okay, multiphasic screening is separate screening tests for single disease. For single disease, they have separate. Actually, I I would have thought it's something else, but this is for a single disease only. They are talking about multiple screening tests. Why would they do this? And they seem to like this. So they are saying that it has enjoyed considerable popularity. 
But the only thing is it's going to be very expensive without any observable benefit. For single disease, you're doing multiple tests. Interesting. So let's go to multi-purpose screening. Here, no, more diseases they want to find. Okay, more than one disease they want to screen for. Okay, they can use one test or more than one test, but more than one disease only they are trying to find. Okay, like um, you will check, you will take, um, what is this, like a pregnant mother and you will screen her for uh, hemoglobin, VDRL, ELISA for HIV, surface antigen for HBV, blood grouping, RH typing, everything. One pregnant lady, if you catch and take her blood, you will run a lot of tests on that blood. Blood from pregnant mother, check for, what and all will you check for? That is now coming under pregnancy screening also, we can add this, okay. They are saying you check her fraud, all this, what and all. Hemoglobin, uh, VDRL, that's for syphilis, ELISA for HIV, surface antigen for HBV. What is HBV? Hepatitis B virus, okay. Then uh, for blood grouping also and RH typing. So all this you can do with one sample of blood. You will do a lot of tests. That is multi-purpose. Okay. Similarly, you will take urine. Right. And what will you check it for? Urine, you will check it for albumin, sugar, microscopy. You will check. Okay. Albumin, sugar and microscopy. You will check for all those casts and crystals and all that. Right. So let us say you take a pregnant woman, okay, focus guys, you are taking pregnant woman and checking her for a lot of things, okay. Then what will you check school children for? School children you can check for height, weight, vision defects, you can check hearing defects, dental defects, congenital defects, just catch a child and check him for everything. What will you do for elderly people? What screening tests you can do for elderly people guys? For elderly people you can check them for diabetes, hypertension, hearing defects, cancer, cataract, refractive error, glaucoma, all that you can check. That's so we have added all that here, okay? So multi-purpose, you will catch hold of one person and do lot of tests on them. So, so guys, multi-phasic, you have understood, don't get confused. Multi-phasic is, um, you will find uh, for single disease like diabetes, you will do multiple tests. You will check for uh, glucosuria, those people who have glucosuria, uh, you will check them for fasting blood sugar level and those who have this fasting blood sugar level above 120 or something milligram per deciliter and 126 is diabetes, right? If it is more than that, you subject them for oral glucose tolerance test to find out if they are true diabetics, okay? So separate screening test for single disease, that is multi-phasic. What is multi-purpose? You take one thing like blood and use it for many purposes. Last thing we are learning here is opportunistic screening, guys. Opportunistic screening, what will you, uh, what is opportunistic screening? Basically, uh, this is screening of a patient who consults the doctor for some other purpose. This is called as case finding screening. So, there are the names here. This is also called as case finding screening. So, patient comes in with other purpose or other chief complaint, you can say but is screened for different disease, right? So that is opportunistic screening. You got a person, try to screen him for other disease. Guys, what do you think uh, is opportunistic screening? See, anybody who walks into any clinic nowadays, they have to undergo a COVID test. So that is kind of an opportunistic screening itself, right? Mostly, let us say we have a, a dermatologist to where people, a lot of women come in for a lot of cosmetic reasons. So, you screen them for uh, breast cancer, isn't it? Isn't that a nice thing? That is also an opportunistic screening. Now, can you see some screenings in uh, newborn what is done? See, as such, physically, a lot of things they check, congenital malformations, right? So, you will do congenital malformations, etc. You will check for in a... Uh, newborn. You can also check them uh, for hearing, uh, eyes check you can do, hypothyroidism you will check, G6PD deficiency you can check for, congenital adrenal hyperplasia you can check for. If it is a high risk, uh, in like in a, in a consanguineous marriage, you can check for phenylketonuria, galactosemia, etc. And if it is a preterm baby or a low birth weight baby, you can check, based on the risk factor, you can check a lot of things, right? So, uh, as such, we have covered the uh, types of screening, right? Guys, so we have looked at the types of screening tests. Now let us look at the uses of screening. So you will have to write, you will have to write four uses, guys. Four uses of screening. What are the four uses of screening? You want to detect cases. Okay, you want to detect, you want to sit and detect the cases. See, they are sitting here, they want to detect the cases. So that is called as PRIS 
prescriptive screening okay so what is prescriptive screening guys case detection okay you will find uh, specific diseases so that is prescriptive screening okay what is prospective screening control you want to control that disease so you want to catch the covid 19 people and make sure that you isolate them so that they don't spread the disease to other prospective screening control the disease research purpose for research purpose you want to do some uh, screening like uh, you want to screen people for uh, some kind of cancer hypertension you catch them early so that you can see the natural uh, history of the disease when you don't know fully you want to research the disease so you uh, try to do screening and catch them educational opportunity what is this <clears throat> educational opportunity so it is basically for creating public awareness and for educating health professionals how so it is information uh, information for uh, our health uh, system right health information source it is so educational opportunity so what did you get as the uh, uses of test, screening test case finding control the disease research education fine if anybody asks you in Viva, no, <clears throat> what are the criteria a screening test should satisfy? Just say three things it should satisfy. It should be acceptable. Sorry, acceptable. It should be repeatable. It should be valid. These three. Then they will ask you what is validity? What? Let us see. What is acceptability? Basically, it should be acceptable to people. You cannot just uh, go and put uh, a rectal thermometer in these people. They will not accept. So this is kind of fine, right? You are uh, checking their temperature from far. So it's acceptable to people. Let's say this is enough. What is uh, repeatable? Every time I check the temperature, I should get almost the same value. I cannot get, uh, uh, once I check, I should not get 90 and the next time I check, I should not get 99, right? So that is not um, correct. So it should be repeatable. When you repeat, you should get the same value, 99, 98.5, something like that. So you should get uh, repeatability, same value you should get, okay? So um, this uh, repeatability, there are some variations, observer variation, biological subject variation. See, observer variation, when you see, you might uh, see different things, right, at every time. That is some kind of intra-observer variation, inter-observer variation. Example, malaria, you give a peripheral blood smear. Some people may see the malarial parasite. Some people may not see the malarial parasite, etc. What is biological or subject variation? The subject itself is having different values. <clears throat> like the blood pressure varies. Blood pressure varies, right? Um, so, the fluctuation uh, is measured in the same individual due to like... Um, uh, physiological variables they do change right your blood pressure is not going to be the same your blood sugar is not going to be the same uh, all the time right so there is some subject or biological variation to be very specific here no you can there are some three things they are saying changes in the parameter observed so there is actually a change then variation in the way patients answer the question so they themselves keep changing the varying their answers regression to the mean regression to the mean right so something to do with the tendency of for values at the extremes of the distribution so all that um, uh, central tendency dispersion etc you can think okay then there could be errors relating to the uh, technical methods like this machine itself may show little little different value at every time so there can be some variability so variability should not be there, that only is repeatability. Repeatability means there should be no variation in the values. But but there will be variation which can be observer variation. You see it differently or the subject itself has variation or the machine is causing issues. Okay. Lastly guys, validity. Validity is the last criteria it should satisfy. Who should satisfy? Screening test should satisfy what? Validity. Can you say validity? Validity. Yeah. What are the three criteria? Say acceptability. Repeatability, validity, validity, validity. Thank you. So, guys, what is validity? It's nothing but the accuracy. The test should be accurate, right? Whatever you want to measure, that should be measured accurately. That is the validity, accuracy. So, it's just validity or accuracy. So, it should be accurate. So, you should get the correct value. You should get the same value every time, and the test should be acceptable to people. So, under this accuracy only, they are mentioning sensitivity, specificity, right? What is all this? Do you know what these are? Sensitivity of a screening test, specificity of a screening test. Yes, all that we will look at in the uh, coming video. So, do you know the difference between screening and diagnostic test? That separate video we have. So, basically, screening is not going to be accurate, but diagnostic test will be 
a basis for treatment. You will label the person as diseased because in diagnostic test, you will confirm that the person has disease, right? So this is about lead time, how you gain lead time. So uh, you are getting this much lead time, right? So you are gaining a lot of time. Usual time of diagnosis was here. You are able to catch the disease early. So this much of lead time you are getting, right? So your outcome will be better if you have, uh, if you are diagnosing early. So we saw the difference and we will see the differences of screening test, diagnostic test. We have video for that. What is the criterion for selection of disease for screening? That also has separate video. Then what is sensitivity? True positives in the total disease. Specificity, true negatives in the total disease. And this is the table. What table? What is this table called as? It's not exactly a contingency table which we use in cohort study extra, but this is something like a co contingency table because again you have A, B, C, D here, right? So you have this uh, calculations that you'll have to do to know whether the screening test is good or not. And then there's also something called as an ROC curve, right? By the way, what is ROC? See, ROC is the receiver operating characteristic curve. What a crazy name, right? Receiver operating characteristic curve. Okay. So here, what are they saying here? Try to understand this. So this is better and this is worse. Okay. So this is false positive, which is a bad thing. That's why it is worse on this side. And these are true positives, which seems to be good. So true positives should be more and false positive rates should be less. So they seem to be talking only about sensitivity here, right? So it is better if it is this side. But always um, you will not have, you cannot have everything in life. So, so basically you will have to draw the line. You cannot have perfect uh, sensitivity that will compromise on your specificity, so on, right? So basically here they are trying to trade off between the sensitivity and the specificity. So this one will be the best one here, right? Whichever is on this side, that is the best. Guys, note one, note one thing guys, repeatability is precision. Okay, this is the reproducibility, consistency, repeatability, reliability, validity is accuracy. It should be close to the actual value. That's what you have to write here. It should be close to the actual value. So, under that you have sensitivity, specificity, Positive predictive value, negative predictive value. What else you have? <coughs> so you have this ROC curve that is receiver operating characteristic curve. So you have a proportion of false positive, proportion of false negative. These should be less actually. What should be more? Positive predictable value, negative predictive value should be more. Sensitivity and specificity also should be more. Okay. So in this video, what have we looked at guys? We have looked at what uh, the definition of screening is. Active search made for uh, detecting hidden disease among apparently healthy individuals by means of rapidly applied test for gaining lead time and treatment that is secondary prevention and control of the spread of the disease. We saw that we want to catch the people who are below the water. That is the uh, iceberg phenomena, you know. Types of screening, mass screening, high risk screening, multiphasic screening, multipurpose screening. Okay, multiphasic is for single disease, multipurpose, you take one sample, screen for everything on earth opportunistic screening okay so mass screening high risk screening multi-phasic multi-purpose opportunistic okay what are the uses of screening test you want to detect the cases you want to control the disease you want to use it for research and then education purpose screening test what criteria it should satisfy just three of them it should be acceptable it should be repeatable and it should be valid that is accurate what is the difference between screening and diagnostic test that is separate video on that uh, this is the lead time diagram then criterion for selecting a disease for screening, separate video is there. How will you select the disease? Which disease you want to screen people for? Sensitivity means what? Specificity means what? All that separate video is there. Positive predictive value, negative predictive value, proportion of false positive, proportion of false negative, these two should be less. ROC curve, receiver, operating, characteristic curve. So what is better here? This uh, this part is better, right? This This test is better. Okay. So that's all for now guys in this video. We'll meet you in the next video. Bye bye. Guys see all the screening tests okay. Now let us say HIV. So you will, uh, ELISA is a screening test. Western blot assay is a diagnostic test okay. 
So uh, chest X-ray could indicate lung cancer as a screening, but you want to confirm, then you'd have to go for diagnostic tests like biopsy, CT scan, etc. Guys, in a blood bank, when you receive blood, you can screen it for HIV, hepatitis B, syphilis, malaria, Chagas disease, brucellosis, etc.